This is the plaintiff, Jill Friedman. She says her car was towed to the defendant's shop after it had been hit by another car when it was parked on the street. Her insurance company paid the defendant to fix her car. He took some shortcuts and tried to cover them up, and now her car still needs necessary repairs because it shimmies and shakes when she drives it. She's suing for $2,633.01, the full amount she's out. This is the defendant, Anthony Franco. He says the plaintiff was delighted when she picked up her car after he repaired it and even exclaimed it looks better than when she first bought it. A week later, she told him the car was driving perfectly, but after that, she brought it back with the bumper falling off. Obviously, it had been hit again, and she's trying to get him to repair it for free. So here they are. He's accused of not doing a bang-up job. All parties, please raise your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Williams are presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Yana. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Friedman, what happened here? Well, um, I uh, had my car parked on the street for overnight, and it was legally parked, and my neighbor knocked on my door and said someone had hit my car. What time of night was that? It was about 6.30 in the evening. Okay. And um, I went down, and the police had just gotten there, and they um, uh, ticketed the woman for driving too fast under the conditions it was raining, and um, her insurance company agreed to pay full liability when okay. they had... Okay, and how did you pick the defendant's shop? Um, I've known uh, Mr. Franco for a very long time, and... Um, Have you had work done there before? Many times. Okay, so you bring the car in on what day? Um, I bring, I have it towed in by AAA on the same day. Which is September evening. 1st? Um, yes. Okay. And then what happens? Then on S September 3rd, um, the person who hit my car, their insurance company, sent out an adjuster. That was speedy. Um, yeah, it was very quick. And um, they agreed to a particular amount with Mr. Franco. All right. So now they settle on an amount, everything's fine, and what happens? Well, I get sent a check. Um, in both my name and Mr. Franco's name. I sign it, I bring it to him, and he signs it so he can use the money for the parts and all of that. Okay, so now there's certain work then that the adjuster had authorized, yes. and we have the authorization. Front bumper and grill, radiator support, fender, wheels. What was being done with the wheels, Mr. Franco? Well, this whole job is about one wheel, one strut, one axle, and the sensor, and it's, it's all framework. What do you mean when you say framework? Oh, okay. Cosmetic? Subframe, no. It's, um, in order to do the subframe, we have to actually disconnect the engine transmission from the frame, suspend it, and then we, could, we have to remove it from the bottom. And in book time is around 14 hours, but because it's the first time it's, and the car is older, um, you it build took, 30. It, it took longer. Right. So well, tell me exactly what that means, steering, gear, and linkage. What does steering, that mean again? Steering, gear, and linkage is basically uh, uh, the, out, the outer and inner tie rod. It's basically a joint, okay? We replace those. We replace the lower control arm, which Do was crushed. Do you have... Uh, can I ask you something? When she picks up the car, is the car done? Like, you're done, yes. or are you waiting for some car more parts? Was the only thing I was waiting for is hubcaps. That's it. Okay. Car is is there, done. Do you give the customer anything in writing that says what you just said? Um, I, had a, I had a work order. I had a folder for this job. Yeah. And, and I lost it. Oh, what happened was... That's unfortunate. The one you get sued on is the one no. you lost. All right. When you, according to you, Ms. Friedman, uh, what parts was he waiting for? A strut and a sensor. Does that ring a bell? Okay, so nope. now we have a dispute, and we have nothing in writing that would clarify it. What about text? I, Did you folks text to each other? Can, yes. Can okay, I and, no, can, I'm asking the question. Okay. Is there a text that covers what circumstance? See, I'm trying to figure out. According to you, you pick up the car because it's drivable, and he's still not done because he doesn't have parts. Correct. According to you, the only part you're missing is the hubcap, nothing else. Everything else was done by you. 
Yeah. Right. I need to figure out which of you is a liar. So this is where something and right now that's just another person who you brought who's on your side. No offense. So I'd really like to see texts or paperwork that will tell me what the truth is. So you started nodding when I said, are there texts between you that yes. say the car is drivable, but I'm waiting for strut and whatever else? Um, it actually has um, from Mr. Franco saying I will do, well, I actually have the actual yeah, text. let's see so. the text in your phone. I'd like to see it in your phone. Do you have nasty pictures in here? Anything you don't want me to see or? Okay, good. I'm a grandma. So, I don't <laughs> like your tone one bit. <laughs> okay, there's your hubcap, ripped off. What year car is this? 2012 Scion. All right, you gave him some dates, October 20th, he says it may work, tell me the date to deliver and pick up. Then you give him the dates, February 2nd, February 5th. He says, I'll make the call. You say thanks. He says, you're welcome. And then December 11th, things have hit the fan. What happens between your text on October 28th about December 5th and, um, and December 11th? Okay, um, what happened was when I picked up the car, it was still shaking and I was, sure that there is something not quite right and we had some phone calls back and forth and I was told that we need to wait for some more parts and um I and was according also to you the only parts are hubcaps, hubcaps completely it. cosmetic and you did all the work yeah now you end up taking it to Midas well I was told that if he could have it for a few days he'd take care of everything well, that, I'm looking and at I the text going, I don't need to hear flapping gums I know that the dates were set for right but on December 2nd uh-huh I was going away and I was going to be back on Monday the 6th. That okay. was a Thursday to a Monday. Okay. When I came back on the 6th, the keys were left under the mat. It was dark out already and they had closed. It was about 6.30 and it was an early were December. Were the hubcaps on? Um, no. Okay. I was told that the hubcaps had come in, but everything was closed up and the hubcaps weren't on at that point. Okay. So what I did was I... Got on to so that. he was supposed to complete the work while you were gone, and the work was not completed. Correct. Okay. So according I was told to the keys how many days did you have the car that time in December? December, when she came to me with that car, it was on a Wednesday, I think. I was working on, on a, a government car, and he had to have his car by Saturday. So day and night, the shop ran to get that car done. She came on Wednesday, car crashed again. When she came when in, when you stop, when you say the car crashed again. How do you know? Yeah. Well, the car is wrecked on the left side. Now the right side's down. What, what does down mean? The, the bumper is disconnected from the, from the front of the car. Okay. And I called over one of the fellows, G. A Wh commuter. What's a fella? Like fellows that work for you, you mean? No, he doesn't work for me. He, I do work for him. Okay. So I called him over. I said, take a look at this with me. So he came over. I said, um, you see how this is? He said, yeah, it's, it's left side's down. That's right. Now, how does it happen? You see, I'm did you speak to your customer and ask her? Did she's you there. Mean? She's there. Yeah. So did you say to her, did you have another accident? I asked her. She said, I don't know nothing about it. Okay. Now, how so did, did he confront car? you and say, did you hit it again? Or did it get hit again? He did. He and, asked me. Okay. And, and then? I said, not that I'm aware of. And I went to look at the other side to see if it had gotten hit. And the bumper, the new bumper that had been put on had was no longer adjusted in the exact way that I was told it would be. I don't know so what you're saying. I was expecting the two pieces to be flush mm -hmm. and they were off by a little bit. And he said that it had been hit on the other side and that threw everything off. Right. I hadn't seen it before that point to notice whether it had been hit off or not. What happens when you decide that it's been, it has to have been hit again, what do you do? Do you end up repairing the bumper again or no? No, it's another accident. Behind the bumper, there's damage. You have to take it down and find out what happened to it. What did okay. she damage? So and did you tell her that? Yes. And what did she say? She flipped out. What'd she say? Then she said, well, I said, look, you, uh, let's, how about I put it up there? Let's take it for a ride, find out what this noise is you're talking about. So we take it down the street. I'm on Weatherfield Avenue. We drive, okay? I hear this, rrr, 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 rrr. And I'm like, what the hell is all that? She goes, oh, it's got to be my brakes. I go, there's nothing wrong with your brakes before. What did you do? Well, you can't do something to brakes and allow that to happen in, in two months, okay? So 
We come back to the shop. I'm sorry, what did you say? In two months, you can't just do that to a car, okay? Wait, so, had you worked on the brakes? No, no. Right, so it wouldn't be two months. I, right, so... When Wait, it no, so I don't understand what you're saying. You can't just two do months something after the to brakes done. and allow that to happen. I this, don't understand this. This is two thing. months after she picked up the car. Right. So then what I did was I told her, I said, look, I got that job in the shop. I can't touch this unless I get done with that. And if I'm done Saturday night, I'm going home to sleep because I'm not even sleeping. So, and I've been traveling out of state, too, back and forth at night. So, come Saturday, I, the guy finally picks up his car. I, I, I got in my, tr my, my truck and I said, I got to go home. So, I went home. I, all Sunday, I stayed home. And then, I, and then Monday morning, she showed up to pick it up. And, and she was all pissed off because I didn't touch the car. I said, Joe. You wrecked the car again. All right, so you take it to Midas, and what does Midas tell you? Okay, so I bring it to Midas, and they say to me, come here, and so I get out of the waiting room, and I go over, and they show me under the car, and they show me that there is a part that was put in where the work was supposed to be done, and I had showed them the insurance list that I had of what the new parts and all, everything that they were supposed to do, and he says, these are not new parts, and he shines a light up, and he says, look, there are the registration numbers on this part that shows that it came from a junkyard or a used car place. And they said, this is what we have to do. And they gave me a bill, a yeah, Well, what out. was what they had to do? They did a visual inspection. They said everything was fine. They do an overall check. And I, in fact, sent Tony the original everything from Midas, including the safety check. So, in essence, she got the left front and right front suspension redone, a new alignment, because you have to then, the spindle, and according to you, anything she had to have redone is because she had to have hit it again, she because can't. that stuff was already done by you. So when she comes on the sixth, do you look at it while she's there? No, I looked at prior, and then I told her what my findings were. Which was? was rear, the, the rear brakes are showing an ABS sensor issue. It, pro, issue with rear so you brakes. did look at, that's when right. you hooked it up between the first yeah. and the sixth, yeah. and you tell her there's a back brake issue, and? And then the other thing I told her is, is that, look, at the front got hit again. You have to take that bumper off and find out what damage you have behind there. And it's another insurance claim. It's another job, yeah. A, on your own insurance. Yes. Right, and, she's, and according to you, she got mad and said, I don't know that it got hit again, and I didn't hit it again. Exactly, she didn't walk with a cane, she was running. Say it again? Running and screaming, hell, you know, yelling. And what was she saying? Oh, I can't believe you can't do the car. You didn't do it. I need it for work and all this. I, I mean, she's just going nuts. Okay. So then you so, go from there to Midas, and uh, for between the 6th and on the 8th, two days later, you're at Midas. And Midas tells you that the, he put in an old suspension, and you were demanding a new suspension because according to you, the estimate says new suspension. And let me hear from you on that. Go ahead. This is how it started. I needed cash for, to start the job because my bank passed a, a, a policy that I had notarized checks to go into the account to start a, P, a, a work order, okay? Well, so, that, that just means that you were having, like, well, bounce my checks bank, at your bank and it, they don't... My, it's a bank issue. Okay, so, I yeah. said, so, I, so the only way I could do it is I could put cash in there. So I told uh, Jill, if you cash it, I'll, uh, I'll put it in, we'll start the work order, and we'll get this going, okay? So she brought me an envelope with the cash. Then she jumped out of the car, she parked, and she jumped out of the car. My garage is open halfway. I'm standing there. Neil was in the shop, just working right behind the door on the left side, that she didn't know, okay? And I asked her, I said, Jill, don't run away. You gotta sign the work order. So I went in to get the work and order. And again, do you have the work order? I don't have it, but right. I'm just explaining to you what happened in that situation. Yeah, yeah, I was just asking. So I walked in to get, get a work order. I pulled it. I, I came back. Do you have a copy of the work order from him? I asked um, Mr. Franco several times. Do you times. have a copy of the work order for him was a question that is pending. No. Okay. After several requests for it. So for he what never has did been a work order. And what has still left to be done. And, and I do see where you text him multiple times saying, what work did you do, please? And he, d he never answers you. Uh, Your Honor? Yeah. So after I came back, she signed the work order. Then she was running off again. I says, Jill, wait a minute. This, this job can, consists of a brand new strut on the driver's side. Physically, it's not going to be safe 
to drive, okay, if you put one new strut, you have to put a second one. So did you put in left and right struts? No, she wouldn't. She said, I'm not putting one dollar in it. Wait, car. I'm sorry. If physically it's not safe to drive thanks to the damage of the left strut, then that's something that the insurance company should cover. The insurance will not put a used strut. They'll put a new one. So the only way to give it to her without putting a dollar in it was to order a used strut. Wait, I'm sorry. The insurance company won't... They, they replace all parts with brand new. Right. Chinese parts, low quality parts, it don't matter. They're right. brand new. Right. So what was the problem? If the insurance company understands that what you're saying is One true, strut. that you have... Why? Yeah. If you have... In other words, I wouldn't have to replace that strut if the right strut, if the left strut hadn't been hit. Ergo, it's part of the insurance claim. I'm not understanding. I've tried so many times, they won't do it. That, that's just silly. So, that's the law. It's not a matter of, do they want to do it? I know insurance companies want to keep their money, but that's the law because that is a damage and a safety issue based on the hit. I so am. it is a proximate cause of the hit. And I told him, I said, the safest thing to do here is to put uh, two brand new ones or a used one. We have to have an equality of pressure on both sides. You, you see that on here it only authorizes the left, correct? He, he is right about that. I did see that, but then when I looked at Midas and they told me and they showed me the picture of the strut that was used, they said that this was on the side that was hit. And I was. What do, what do you mean? That oh, the, the strut that was the, used. The okay, so that we're. Was taken. So, we, so it's the issue that you say it's all supposed to be new parts. Yes. Did he ever tell you who was going to use used parts? No. And did the insurance company authorize all new parts? He authorized all new parts. If you, he said, if you. If you but he said, if you want to put a used part, if she doesn't want to pay for it, how he ever knew this, I don't know. If she don't want to pay for the other one, he says, it's up to you. You can put a used one in there. All right. Uh, you know that on the bottom of, uh, you read as far as the top where it says these are all new parts. You know that on the bottom there's a sentence that says, this repair estimate is based in part on the use of replacement parts, which are not made, made by the original manufacturer of the damaged parts in your motor vehicle. What does that mean? That's just like generic parts that aren't Scion parts, right? Yes. Okay, so they're generic parts. They're junk. Okay. So the real question, what this all comes down to, is you're suing for $2,092.83 refund on the car repairs. Why $2,092.83? Uh, is that the bill you got from Midas? Yes. Okay. And then $540.18 monies for the car sensor. Tell me about the car sensor. Yes. When I picked up the car, the lights were on. Um, in the on the dashboard saying that there was something wrong I didn't take out the manual and look at each what each thing was but it was towed over to mr. Franco's place and he had made an agreement with the insurance adjuster the agreement as far as I knew was that and this was after talking to mr. Warner and mr. Franco is that if there was any more work that needed to be done they could that's always that. the deal yeah right and so um, anyway Okay, can you answer my question, though? Yes. My, right. I, yeah. So when I picked up the car on the 6th... Of December. Yes. Those three lights were still on, and I'm thinking, okay, I don't know how much he has done and not done. He's just telling me that he's had a rough weekend, and he didn't get to it until about 1.30 Monday afternoon, and he'll leave the key under the mat, and we'll have to make another arrangement for me to bring it back because he hadn't finished everything. Okay. But it was safe to drive. Okay. So that's how I left it there. Yeah. When now can you tell me about, faulty. okay, so yes, you take it to I'm Midas and what happens and so tell I me about the ABS. Midas, and when I get it back from Midas, I'm there, I'm sitting in the waiting room. When they bring it back out late in the day, um, I get into the car to take it home and the lights are still on. And so I go back into Midas and I say, what are these lights for? Why are they still on? And they said, oh, that's the center, sensor. We probably just have to reset it. And I said, oh, okay. I didn't ask at the time, did you replace the sensor or anything like that? So they brought it back in and they came out and said, somebody cut the lines. We need to put in a whole new sensor. Somebody did something up in there and they cut the lines and they couldn't explain okay. it to me. Tell me about the cut lines on the sensor. What date? This is December 8th, they tell her that, I had, right? I, I did no work on her car, nothing at all. I just I'm sorry, I don't it. understand what you're saying. No, I, I know you didn't do any work nothing. on her car then, but why would there be a cut sensor? I have no idea. I, okay, what, did you ever fix the sensor? Was that part of the original thing? That was thing? replaced. It was brand new. The car left with no lights on. Okay, so when you get, so you did replace the sensor? Yes. All right, and then Midas says it was sliced and you didn't do any work nope. on one through six. Nope. 
other than hook it up to see what was wrong with it. No. Nope. I have no idea what work you did. You know that, right? You know, you know that as we stand here, you have proof of doing nothing because you lost a file. You don't yes. have, you didn't get me receipts from yes. uh, all of those parts. You didn't, so you realize that, right? You realize that. And the car was delivered perfectly. And you know what I did too? In the agreement, I did $1,650 worth of work extra to go around the whole car and clean it up for her. Yeah, that's what I usually find car mechanics do is $1,600 worth of free work. No, they don't do that. No shops do that. I'm the only shop in Hartford that does that. Everybody right. tells me. Do the, the same other way. shops have paperwork to show the work they did and receipts? I see their jobs. $2,633.01 verdict for the plaintiff. I'm leaving. <laughs> Well, after what seemed like a very complex case, the plaintiff has prevailed. She gets everything she was seeking, the $2,600. Mr. Franco, the defendant, is on his way out of the courtroom. Mr. Franco, tell me what you're thinking right now. Well, uh, I lost the, the work order folder for all the work. Uh, of course, I can pre present that. Um, the individuals that were required to speak for the job had to be summoned, and you can't summon them here. So, the, um, of course, uh, she got what she wanted. She, she robbed the court. Well, listen, I'm sorry, but that's the judge's decision. You, you know, you argued your case. It didn't work, and uh, I'm sorry, but she prevails. You lose. Okay, thank you. Oh, now here comes Ms. Friedman, the uh, plaintiff in this case. You finally are going to get everything you were seeking. How do you feel about that? Relieved, because I'm not the kind of person that goes off and goes crazy and screaming and running around in circles over things. And I did this very transparently through text. I also had sent him a certified letter um, in April, giving him two weeks to get back to me. I gave him many, many opportunities to make it right and to speak with me. He never re returned phone calls. And many of the things that he talked about were not true, none of it. I mean, um, I don't know where it came from, to tell you the truth. All I know is that um, I needed to make things right and become whole. All right. Well, Ms. Friedman, congratulations. Thank you very much. You get everything you were seeking. Thank you. Yes, I do. Good enough. So, Harvey, that'll bring this case. This was a very complex issue between these two parties. What are your thoughts on it? You know, Doug, there are many states that actually require repair shops to write down specifically ahead of time what they are going to do, what parts they're going to replace, and if something happens once they get into the car, they have to add that to the document and contact the person who owns the car. Uh, what I would say to you is make sure that happens, even if there's not a law in your state that requires that. Demand it of the repair shop, because going in, you need to know what is exactly supposed to be done. Have you ever had debt? <laughs> I think I was born with debt. Right? I was born in debt. Have I had debt? Yes. Student loans. I had student yeah. loans for all four years. You had student loans when I met you. Yes. Four years like, of I college, remember I, three years of law school. Like, we were married and still paying off student loans. Right, right. That was crazy. Uh-huh. So I, I had to deal with that. I had medical debt. I remember the time when I was, well, before I met you, I had this injury, and I did not have insurance. I was working in a restaurant, and uh, it took me... 15 years, I think, to pay it off for some, <laughs> some insane amount of time by paying a little bit at a time, like 50 bucks or something to a collection agency. I finally paid it off eventually. But yeah, I mean, uh, there's nothing wrong with debt. I mean, if you manage it responsibly, manage right? Yeah. And uh, they say, uh, what, debt is the slavery of the free, right? Yeah. Of free people. But you are very debt averse. You I am, don't I'm like just a, debt. No, I am, right? I am uh, you know, uh, my father didn't like debt. Right. I, it right. makes me nervous. I don't know right. why. It's not right. like, you know, America's about to fall and I'm no. gonna have to move to another country where no. I don't speak the language. No. But that, you know, that's right. that's what my father, you know, right. uh, you went through as a you Cuban. You can't and he stand just, getting burned for credit cards with a late fee or a little bit of interest. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I don't. No. I, I try to. And you I was that, always like that. I you was have the like refugee that. mentality I really dad. do. You can you take know? the girl out of the refugee camp, but you can't right. take the refugee camp out of the right. girl. And nothing, I can't. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And, no. Uh, I want to live live honestly and, and right. reasonably, and I don't like carrying debt. Right. You're like a pay cash, buy it now. <laughs> no layaway. No, there's no layaway. <laughs>